What I want to talk about today, I want to kind of go off of the regular schedule because we're getting into uh, both a warm and a wet season. We had a lot of rains last night. So what comes along with uh, rainy and hot? Anyone know? Discomfort. Discomfort? Humidity. What else? Humidity? What else? Steam. <laughs> no. He's not wrong. Not steam. He is wrong. <laughs> He's wrong. <laughs> hot compressor is really I've seen it steam. Steam? Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah, hot compressor. That could happen. He saved you there. That Jacob's got your back, man. He does got my back. Yeah. So you start to get moisture related issues and some of it's comfort, but some of it is things like sweating ductwork, uh, sweating vents, sweating air handlers, all those sorts of things, right? Do you ever see that? Yeah. You ever see mildew growing on a supply plenum anymore? No, yes. never. It doesn't happen anymore. Yes. It does? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm glad air conditioning hasn't changed since I've been out of the field for the last 27 years. <laughs> So I want to talk about why that happens and what to do about it as a service technician. Because sometimes we get the mindset like, well, what, what, what can we do, right? So what's the first thing? If you come up to a system, and we're going to talk about a few different categories, but let's talk about a system with a sweating air handler or sweating ductwork. I put those in the same category. Sweating air handler, sweating ductwork. And why are those in the same category different than a sweating vent? Why are those, why are those two categories different from each other? Where are vents located? Inside, Inside what? The condition space, right? So vents are in the space that should have the humidity controlled. So when they're sweating, what do we pay attention to? The condition. What's going on inside the space? Like, is the humidity high in the space? And why would the humidity be high in the space? Right? That'd be the first thing you'd, you'd think about. But air handlers, furnaces, coils, ductwork, they're outside of the condition space. So it's kind of a different thing, right? So if you're not in the condition space, what, what is hard to control? the conditions around the ductwork and around the air handler, right? So like you're in an attic, for example, what do we do to control the conditions in the attic? You could, you could insulate in some cases. Attic vents. attic vents, right? You could do that. But what's the problem we're trying to solve for here? This is, I'm glad you said both of those things. Because what's the problem we're trying to solve for when things are sweating? What is the problem? Humidity, what's another word for that? Let's throw out words for it. Dew point. Dew point. Ooh, this guy's smart. Britton always has it. You know, he's always got it there. He's a little slow with it, but it, when it comes out, it's always it's gold. Dew point, what else? What are some other words? What'd you say? Yeah, you did. You said something. I saw it. He said something. Moisture, water, water vapor, whatever you want to call it, right? You, you already said humidity. Not butt connections. <laughs> That's a whole different thing. Hopefully it's not relative humidity, if you know what I'm saying. Never mind. <laughs> that was a little West Virginia joke there. <laughs> hey, if you're in any of these groups, you know that joke comes up all the time anyway. What we're trying to control for is moisture. That's what we're trying to control for. But what do we do when we do things like insulation or venting? What are we controlling for? Do insulation and venting help with moisture? No, what do they help with? Heat, temperature. We can do things, for example, that drop the temperature of an attic. Does that decrease the amount of moisture in the attic, the amount of water suspended in the air? Well, here's the trick, is that it actually can. If we get to dew point and then it starts to sweat, we're actually reducing the moisture in the air, right? We're getting to 100% relative humidity and now that water is starting to come out of the air and end up on your ductwork, right? So we're doing a really good job dehumidifying the attic when all of our ducts are sweating, right? That's, I mean, think about it that way. So what do we do in order to dehumidify the air inside the house? What do we do? What's the magic? This isn't a trick question, boys. It's all right, I'm slowing down. Run it over a cold coil, right? And what, what is the temperature point that the coil's at that makes it start to build up moisture and condensation on it? What's that called, Britain? Dew point. Dew point, there we go. It's called dew point, right? So that coil is below dew point. So when the air runs over the coil, that air gets to what percentage relative humidity? 100. 100%. The point at which air hits 100% relative humidity, i.e. saturated, i.e. dew point, it starts to give up its moisture to the coil. Right? Make sense? So if I take a cold glass and I set it in this room and it begins to sweat, where's that water coming from? 
there around. It's not sweating from the inside out of the glass, right? It's condensating on the outside of the cup. And why? Because that cup is below dew point, which means that the air that comes into contact with, the, with that cup gets to 100% relative humidity. It gives up its moisture to that cup. So that cup is dehumidifying the room. Not much, but that moisture that shows up on the outside of the glass is pulling moisture out of the air and onto the glass. Does that make sense? It's doing the exact same thing as why your evaporator coil drains water out the building. It's hitting dew point. And so when we have ducts that are sweating in an attic or an air handler that's sweating in a garage, what is it doing? Well, the air handler is dehumidifying the garage and the ducts are dehumidifying the attic because they're hitting dew point. Changing the temperature of the garage. So let's say we drop the temperature. Customer says, my air handler's sweating. I think I should insulate my garage to help with my air handler sweating. What do we say to that? What we say is, well, that's fine, whatever. You know why? Because we don't want to argue with the guy. He's an old guy. He's an engineer. He lives in the villages. We don't want to get in a fight with him. So we say it's fine. But it's a terrible idea. Why? What are we doing to the temperature of the air and the space? Lowering We're lowering it. What is that going to do to the surface temperature of the air handler? Is that going to make it go up when we make the space cooler? It's going to go down too, right? We drop the temperature in the garage. We drop the temperature of the air handler surface. So what did we just do? We made it dehumidify the garage even better which means that it's going to sweat more. Do you know what we could do in order to keep it from sweating? Let's come up with some really creative ideas of how you could keep an air handler for sweating. If cost was no object, what could you do? Throw a mini split in there. Okay, that's one possible solution. But a mini split also cools the space. So maybe, but maybe not. Some mini splits might not actually solve the problem. Mini splits actually aren't great at dehumidifying, and we'll we can talk about that later. But the easiest way to keep an air handler from condensating is to take a space heater, point it at the air handler and let it run 24 hours a day. What does that do in order to keep, what does that do to keep the air handler from sweating? It heats the surface of the air handler up, which does what? Keeps it from hitting dew point, right? Same thing with the glass. If I take the glass, it's sweating. I point a space heater at it. Is it going to keep sweating? No, it'll stop sweating. Why? Because I'm heating up the surface of the glass. Make sense? What do you do if you're trying to get, if you're trying to get moisture off the outside of your windows on your uh, glass in your car? So we're not talking about, you know, of course you do the wipers, but the outside just keeps condensating. What do you do? You put heat on it from the inside, right? What does that do? Heats up the outside of the glass, keeps it from condensating. When you go to a customer's house and it's got a whole bunch of moisture on the outside of the windows, when does that happen in the villages, for example, when you see a bunch of moisture on the outside of the glass or the outside of the vinyl? It happens when they're keeping it cold inside, right? The colder it is inside in the summer, the more likely there's going to be moisture on all the glass. So what do you do to get the glass from building up moisture? Don't keep it so cold or get better glass so that way the outside is at a warmer temperature compared to the inside. Does that make sense? Everybody following me so far? So let's talk about some real prescriptions here. So if you've got ductwork that's sweating, we say, well, we should put a radiant barrier in, right? Have you ever seen, you know, you know what, everybody know what a radiant barrier is? That foil on the deck of the, have you ever been in an attic with a radiant barrier on a hot summer day? Does it feel nicer up there? No. Sure does. It feels way worse. Bert, just, just hang with me here, okay? <laughs> All right, I know you're not the star and it's hard for you right now, but if you can just hang with me for a second. So it feels great. It feels more comfortable because the temperature's lower. But dropping the temperature, did that do anything to reduce the amount of moisture in the attic? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it lowered the dew point. Well, right. I mean, because everything starts sweating, and so then that causes the letter to be less moisture in the attic, right? But what did you do? Well, by making the attic cooler, what did you do to the surface temperature of all your ducts? Did you make them hotter or cooler? Cold. You made them colder. So did you make them more or less likely to sweat? You made them more likely to sweat. What happens if you take an attic that isn't very well ventilated and you add a bunch of ventilation to it? You put an attic fan on it, you put a bunch of vents and like that, oh, that's gonna solve the problem. What does that do to the temperature of the attic? Lowers it. Lowers it. What does that do to the amount of water that's moving through the attic per hour? Is there more or less water moving through the attic? More the there's thing. more because, there, well, it doesn't matter. If there's more air moving through, the attic, there's more water moving through the attic. Stands to reason, right? If you take an attic and you seal it completely, the amount of water that's in that attic is static based on the amount of air that's in the attic, right? So if you dehumidify that air in the attic, eventually it's going to get below dew point and now it's going to not sweat anymore. But if you keep moving new air through the attic, cooler attic, 
more air moving through, ducts are going to sweat more. So the worst sweating attics that you will find, and if you start to think back and if you start to look forward as you go in attics, the, where ducts sweat the most are going to be well ventilated attics with radiant barrier because you're giving it a lot of moisture and it's nice and cool. Is your mind blown right now, Bert? Oh my gosh, <laughs> my poor brains. So what do you do in order to keep an duct from sweating in an attic? Well, you see, <laughs> so much of my life has been wasted. You seal the attic and you dehumidify the attic. So you seal the attic, you put a dehumidifier up there. Yeah, you can spray foam it, but you wouldn't have to. See, here's the trick. Spray foaming, spray foam is what? What is it actually? Insulation. It's an insulation, right? So what does that do to the temperature of the attic? Makes it cooler, which what does what to the surface temperature of the ducts? Makes them cooler, right? So insulation and radiant barriers are good for power bills. If you want to drop power bills, you add insulation, you add radiant barriers, you add ventilation, you do all those sorts of things. That helps with power bills. Does it help with moisture? No. It does not help with moisture. What helps with moisture? Getting the moisture out of the air, right? Or containing the air so that you're not giving it more air. Heating things up can also decrease condensation. Now heating things up is kind of a trick, right? Because that's usually not, it's not usually easy to do. But if you have an attic where the ducts are all sweating and it's got radiant barrier, you know what the cheapest way to make the duct stop sweating is? Rip out the radiant barrier. And the client's going to say, well, but I just paid for all that, and isn't that going to increase my power bills? The answer is yes, it is going to increase your power bills, and yes, you did just pay for all that, and now that's wasted. But will it stop your ducts from sweating? Yeah, probably, because that's probably when they started sweating. How about a customer puts a new roof on, and now they ventilated it really good, and it's new cool roof technology, where they, maybe it's got the you know, new cool roof shingles, or it's got, the, it's got the radiant barrier right on the roof, underside of the roof decking or whatever, and now all of a sudden, their ducts are sweating. Well, the funny thing is we happen to put a new AC system in at the same time because they're making lots of investments in their house, right? So who's to blame? Well, they blame us because it's our ducts that are sweating. Now, we didn't change the ducts probably, right? So what is it? Well, it's these new fancy equipment that's doing it, right? What do you think changes the surface temperature of ducts more? The inside temperature of the air in the ducts or the temperature of the air around the ducts? What changes the surface temperature of the duct more? The air around the ducts. And what do we do when we've got ducts that are sweating? We keep trying to mess with the temperature of the air inside the ducts because that's the only thing we can do. We go, we make a, a, a setting, well, we're gonna increase the airflow on this unit. That's gonna help. I mean, especially on YouTube, people catch on to this. I'm stealing almost all of this from Rick Sims' presentation, Condexation, that he did here two years ago, which you all have available to you. It's like a two hour presentation on the HVAC uh, YouTube channel. But he goes through like the actual temperature differences. And what it comes down to is, is that if you go from the coldest to the warmest air that we're ever gonna see inside of a duct, it's like a two degree swing on the surface temperature. Like you're not going, it's not gonna make a big difference. We put R8 ducts versus R6, you might get half a degree. It's not significant. What is significant? Increasing or decreasing the attic temperature. Increasing or decreasing the radiant gains of the attic. What's, what's the message here? The message is, is that for houses that have moisture problems, making them colder anywhere without dehumidifying better makes the problem worse. So we go into a customer's house, we sell them a brand spanking new Infinity 15,000 stage brand new super dehumidifying unit, right? We put it in, what does the customer start doing to their set point? When they just got this brand new high efficiency system and now they can really do what? They can lower that temperature because when Tyler or Drani go out, what do they tell the customer? We're gonna make this place so cold you can Hang meat in it. We just talked about this in the class the other day, right? We're going to make this place so cold you can hang meat in there. No, you do not want to hang meat inside your house. That is a terrible idea. It's unhealthy. It's not FDA rated for that. Do not hang meat inside your house. Now, the point is, is that the customer thinks because they got a brand new unit and it saves money on power bills that they can set the temperature lower. And what does that do? It takes everything and makes it colder, which makes everything more likely to condensate, including the walls, the ducts, the air handler, everything is more likely to condensate. Whenever a customer talks about, or, or has, dropped the temperature of something, dropped the temperature of their garage, dropped the temperature of the closet that the air handler's in, dropped the temperature of the attic, the next question we need to ask is, well, did we dehumidify that? And if the answer is no, we, it's either going to sweat or it's gonna be more likely to sweat than it was before. So what do we do? Well. We get better about communicating the necessity of sealing 
and dehumidification. That's the answer to these problems, sealing and dehumidification. If we go to a customer's house today and they've got sweating ductwork, one of the very first things we should do in that case, customer's got sweating ductwork, we go there today, what's one of the first things we should do in that case? based on what I'm talking about right now. We should look at the conditions in the attic, right? What, what's going on in this attic? Is it, oh, did they add a radiant barrier? Okay. Does that mean that they have to tear out their radiant barrier? No, it doesn't mean they have to, but it does mean that the other options are gonna be expensive. Are we afraid of giving customers expensive options? Should that be something we're afraid of? Absolutely not. Do we care if they take the expensive options or not? Not really, it'd be nice if they did, but we don't really care. Why do we offer people expensive options to, that actually will solve their problems? This isn't a trick question. Because our job is to offer them solutions to their problems. It's not our job to decide on their budget for them. So what will solve every, essentially, every duct sweating problem that exists in our market? Seal the attic and dehumidify it. Now, how can you seal the attic? You can foam it, or you can seal it by any other means you want. You could take and put peel and stick on the undersides of the soffits and seal peel and stick on the, uh, or some sort of like duck mask or something like that on the vents and leave the insulation on the roof deck and then dehumidify the attic. <gasps> what's that gonna do though? What's the result gonna be? Cause you need to communicate this too. If you do it that way, what's gonna happen? Hotter they're, attic. they're gonna have a hotter attic, which is gonna mean higher power, higher power bills, right? Cause now you're putting a dehumidifier, you're paying money for that. You got a hotter attic, you're gonna pay money for that. Higher power bills, is that good? Well, some customers don't care. Some customers, that's not a big deal. But to some customers, that would be a big deal. So for them, what's the next option? Foam the entire deck, right? Do you have to pull out the ceiling insulation when you foam the deck? No. No, you don't need to. Why, why would you need to? We, we are used to doing that. It's clean, so it's a nice thing to do because you got all this dirty insulation, especially in an older house, whatever. So it's a great option, but do you have to? No, you don't have to. What's the point? The point is to get the attic sealed and get the moisture out of the attic. That's how we solve moisture problems. Seal things, pull moisture out. So let's talk again about inside the space, our vents that are sweating. Have you ever gone into a restaurant and noticed sweating vents or noticed rusting vents or leak, you know, they've got the stains around. So what's unique about restaurants that makes them more likely to have that problem? Anybody know? Uh, oh, there's one, that's one good reason. Conditioned space. What's that? Like, at like five guys, it's in the conditioned space. They're ducks. Well, being in the conditioned space and uninsulated can result in, in, in dripping, but it's loss of control of moisture in the conditioned space, that's why. And why do restaurants lose control? What's happening to the doors all the time? Open and close, open and close, open and close, right? The more the doors are open, the more likely you're gonna lose control of moisture inside the space. What else do they have? They have kitchen hoods, right? They have kitchen hoods. And old school kitchens didn't have any necessity to replace that air that they're venting out with conditioned air coming back in. And not just conditioned, the air doesn't just need to be cooled, what needs to happen to the air? It needs to be dehumidified. It needs to be de dehumidified really well, because what's the thing with outdoor air in Florida in the summer? What does it have a lot of in it? It has a lot of moisture, it's got a lot of water in it, right? So what do they do to try to solve the problem? Oh man, it feels really muggy in here. It's uncomfortable. What do they do to try to compensate for the mugginess? They drop the temperature, right? So you've got a perfect storm. A lot of moisture load coming from the outside. Doors opening. A lot of moisture load coming from the inside. Kitchens and kitchen hoods. Low set point. So it's cold. All three of those make for a perfect storm for vents to sweat. So what do they do to solve the problem? Well, you know, that's where you have vestibules. So you have two sets of doors. That's, a lot, that's one of the big reasons why you got that. So it isolates the two spaces. So we open these doors, close, open these doors. It reduces the amount. Use air curtains, things like that to keep the air, outside air from coming in. You can raise the set point, but mostly you gotta deal with the kitchen so that way you have positive pressurization with dehumidified air, right? So now when the doors open, does the air go in? No, it goes out because you're positively pressurizing with dehumidified air. Does that make sense? So if you think about things like this, it helps you solve the, the, the the concept of why it happens in residences too. People with a lot of kids who are going in and out, they got a pool deck. Do you see somebody with a deck with kids in a pool deck and you got sweat and vents? I can almost guarantee you why the vents are sweating. Why? Because the kids are going in and out. Bert, don't be like that, okay? <laughs> You're bad enough as is, I'm just kidding. No, when you keep the doors open, obviously moisture's gonna come in and a lot of people with kids, they're gonna leave the doors open because they wanna be able to hear them outside or leave one of the doors cracked or whatever. People with animals that go in and out a lot, same sort of thing. You know, you think those doggy doors seal well to the outside? Most of them don't, right? So that's a lot of moisture. So think about how's moisture getting in, reduce that. And then with equipment, 
The ways equipment dehumidifies better is colder evaporator coil, longer runtime. All right, colder evaporator coil, longer runtime. But if we don't have enough heat load coming in, what does that do to runtime? So you put radiant barrier in, that makes the system run less, shorter runtime, right? So now that can even affect that problem on the inside of the space. So when we're assessing inside, what are the conditions? Why is the humidity high in here, right? Two, is the system running enough? Is it sized properly? Did something change in the structure that decreased the loads? And then third, is the evaporator coil getting cold enough? But see, that's counterintuitive because a lot of times when we're trying to keep vents from sweating, we're like, well, let's, de let's increase the air temperature coming out to make the vent warmer so it doesn't sweat. But what did we do to space conditions when we did that? Increased we increased our indoor relative humidity. So when vents are sweating, yes, obviously, if you've got a freezing evaporator coil, a super dirty filter, that kind of stuff, yeah, address that. You gotta look at all your airflow indicators, dirty blower wheel, all that. But again, when that happens, when you've got a cold coil, that's gonna actually dehumidify the space more. So you gotta think about, you know, why are we losing control of humidity in this space with a system that's dehumidifying really well? Old, crappy, dirty units dehumidify really well. Again, bad on power, but a lot of times power consumption and dehumidification are in conflict with each other. And we gotta remember that when we're having conversations with our customers. If you wanna dehumidify a house really well, then have nice single pane, horribly, you know, uh, tra uh, uh, radiant transmitting windows that let a lot of sunlight in, have a really hot attic, seal it up, seal the house really good, but let a lot of heat get in. So sealed so that air can't get in, but not insulated very well so that heat can get in, right? Well, that's counterintuitive, that doesn't make any sense. Well, guess what? Your unit's gonna run a lot. Right? And when a unit runs a lot, that dehumidifies better. So it's about sealing that reduces moisture. Insulation is only for heat. So anytime you've got a moisture problem and you're tempted to do something with adding insulation, check yourself because you're going to make it worse. And I know I've done it like a thousand times. I've taken and, and uh, you know, heaped insulation over the top of vents to try to keep them from sweating on the bottom side, which guess what that does? The opposite. It makes them sweat more. Sealing is what you should focus on when you have vent sweating to make sure attic air isn't coming in around, that kind of thing. So again, when you see moisture, think sealing. Think heating, not cooling. Heat things in order to reduce moisture, seal them to reduce moisture, don't insulate them. Make sense? You all get a takeaway from that, hopefully? Some of you are falling asleep, that's fine, I understand. That's good. All right, thank you all, have a great week. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind, hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to hvacrschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing, you can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.